Hello everyone, it's Andrew. Uh, welcome back to what's on the bench or the sort of table as it is. Things have moved on a little bit. The MC8 is in pieces. I have the heavy bit of it here. What I've been doing is with the, uh, I've taken the chassis, taken the truck apart. I have primed and sprayed the chassis black. So all of it is black and therefore there's not going to be the same amount of chrome and nuts and bolts evident when we see it on video. So I thought I'd just show you um, what it looks like and how big it is. I, it's hard to just appreciate how big these trucks are without seeing, uh, you know, something to scale it by. Um, I'm six foot tall, so you can maybe get an idea as to how long the chassis is there. Okay, it's pretty long, so it makes quite it's quite awkward to work on. It's quite awkward to uh, Quite awkward to paint. That's what the shoelace is at the end here. So I hang it up. Um, I hang it up to spray it as it uh, as it rotates, and then I hang it up to dry. Um, I can't. I don't really want to put it down anywhere. So it hangs. Uh, I've got a specially constructed hook type arrangement, so it just hangs and uh, dries like that. And the other important thing I want to show you with this, uh, I am putting the revolver motor back in, so it's, uh, it's out start life, the noisy uh, outrunner um, rotating revolver motor from Holmes Hobbies. Started off with that, I took it out and put the BC-8 uh, sealed can brushed motor in, and I think it lost a little bit of character, so good motor, fine, I mean there's nothing wrong with the motor itself, just very quiet, and uh, I, the truck lost a bit of, I've been watching a bit of some of the old videos, me and Terry, you know, it's, uh, you know, we miss the noise it used to make. So the revolver's going in, which is, of course, a um, brushless brushless motor, but it's not censored. So there's even a little bit of cogging at low speed, which I think is quite, you know, it's again something I miss. You know, these trucks are clunky and, you know, they're not the smoothest things in the world in, in the real life. So I think it's, uh, it, it, it's lost a little bit. So I'm going to put the revolver back in. Um, so there's no motor in at the moment, you might be able to see, uh, maybe not. Got a dark mat, dark top, dark chassis, perfect for filming. Uh, what I also wanted to do, what I wanted to show you is the servo setup in here, because it's a little bit unusual. I did break the servo horn a while back, and I have put the new one in after I painted, so it's pretty obvious. I thought you might want to have a little look, so let's jump cut into the front of the truck. Right, so there's the servo. Um, you can see it clearly there. So there's one big servo in the middle that turns that. Um, y you could make your own metal one, I suppose, but you can't really buy an aftermarket one. So I have to keep every time I break this, I have to ring Simon up at Green's Models, and he sends me one for a couple of quid. It's um, it's a resin piece, but it has got you can't really make it out. But it is um, there's a, there's a smaller horn behind it. That's, that, so it's kind of dual layered and uh, it gives it a bit more strength I guess. When it snaps it's only the very ends that snap and because they're the unsupported part the, I don't know whether you can, you can make that out, probably not, it, it's really not that easy to see but there is um, a sm like a smaller black version um, which is actually what goes into the servo. Then you've got the cream resin part which sits over the top and the ends go into. So, um, yeah, so that's quite an interesting thing. A lot of people say, well, why don't, you know, have you got two servos in there? Or um, why don't you put a metal one on and stuff? It's, it's not really a standard part, you know, it's not a not a standard setup at all. But uh, it works fine. I mean, I've never broken this in regular use. I've only broken it by being a clown with it. So, you know, fair play to them. Uh, so, yeah, that's really the MC8 for you. So it's, it's going to get, um, it's been lacquered. And it's now going to get some highlights done on it just so you know kind of bring out some of the axle detail and so on and then i will start putting some mud effects some um paint and stuff on it to make it permanently muddy and dusty and the overall aim as i say is so that you can't see all the kind of chrome bits and nuts and bolts and washes and things that you could see before yeah so that's the mc8 uh, all black yeah big old thing so Unimog next. Um, it's got a little companion. Should we uh, should we go get it and have a look? Yeah. All right. Moggy has a little trailer. Moggy has a little friend. 
a little drag along pet uh, behind her now. And therein lies a bit of a tail. And um, it's still a little bit of a work in progress, but at least it is actually attached and um, I, I could, uh, you know, take her out as it stands. So, let's have a little look at this, a little look at the trailer, a little close up down here, shall we? Please, cameraman, if you will. Thank you. Right, so what are we looking at here? Well, this is the um, previously black trailer I bought from Amazon, so it's all metal. Um, I got it for a steal, really, about 20 quid, I think, can't remember. Um, it's uh, on some 1.9 beadlocks, just cheap eBay ones, with the smallest 1.9 diameter tyres I could find. Cheap eBay ones again. It may yet end up on 155s at some point in its life, uh, but because uh, I think these look a little bit too big, but for now it'll do. It is uh, leaf sprung, you see the leaves underneath there. And I have taken out one of the, it comes with two, two leaf packs, two, two leaf springs on each side. I've taken the shorter ones off. Primarily because on its maiden run behind the SCX-102 in our cement quarry, it, uh, it, it was a problem because the leaf started digging in and bent outwards. So they were kind of pointing down. So yeah, there was no good. And secondly, though, because it, it just helps it be a little bit soft, a little bit more compliant. A little bit less, you know, boing behind the truck, right? So just a big one, the one big, uh, one big leaf spring in there at the moment, and it seems pretty good. This is all come from eBay, all various bits and bobs. Basically, the trailer has got a a link, a suspension, a, a, a kind of body link. What do you call them? You know, link. <laughs> uh, a link end and a little metal ball joint in there that is going through a long. Uh, chromed, kind of like a long, uh, a headless bolt, a long grub screw, I guess you'd call it. That is sitting in the tray, the, the drop hitch that came from eBay, um, which is sitting in the mount that came with the bumper. Now these are not a good fit. This is too wide, initially, far too wide for the hole here, so I've had to dremel it down so you can see a rough, chromey, kind of bare aluminium -y look to it. That's where well, I haven't finished dealing with that yet. Um, it is bolted in behind, and that's that's the kind of preferred way I've mounted the trailers so far on my trucks. You know, the big cross trailers and so on. It's not a terribly scale look, I will admit. Um, I could, I, it comes with a little ball head on here, and I could probably get a little, you know, kind of what well, I don't even know what to call it, the the socket bit that that goes out and sits on the uh, ball of the trailer of, of the uh, of, of the hitch. It's all very realistic and scale, but it probably comes off straight away, I would have thought. One thing I have learned from the, the dragging the cross trailer around and so on, the big three axle cross trailer, is they, they have a lot of weight uh, associated, a dead weight. You know, it's unpowered wheels. The smallest of obstacles can become a big problem to a trailer. And, you know, the truck drives over it fine because it's got powered wheels, but the, the, the trailer's not so much. So you can put an awful lot of pressure and strain on this section so i quite like to have a nice strong link here which incidentally because it screws into the trailer the trailer can rotate completely around just because it's unscrewing you know if i unscrew that a little bit so that there's room in either direction you know there you go so now the trailer will go that way it can go this way and it's not putting any stress at all on the truck right so if the trailer happens to truck topple over I'm not in any danger of ripping anything off the back of the truck. Yeah? So it'll go up and down because of the ball in the, uh, in, in, the, in the link end here. So there's plenty of lateral movement. The threads are long enough on here so the whole thing can go up and down on the, on, on the screw. You know, I could put a longer screw in if I wanted to. It's all held on by a little nylock nut. So that's not really going to come undone if it's done properly. And it, it, it to me... Yes, it's not terribly realistic, it's a bit clunky and a bit clumsy looking, but I've never had one fail uh, in all the, you know, we've run, our tra we've run our trailers on the back of the MC8s and MC6s pretty hard. Um, so yeah, th this is, you know, the least scale part of the Unimog, I will admit, um, but it is what it is. So the good thing is I can obviously just unscrew these bolts here, the whole thing comes off, you never knew it was there. So then it'll go, it will get painted, I don't think I'll, I won't leave it 
black per se. I'll probably paint it green like everything else. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty exciting. I'm kind of keen to see, um, to, to pull this behind. I, I, on the 10.2 run, this was a bit of a nightmare on the quarry. So I will have to pick the ground carefully for it because it's, uh, you know, trails are a bit of a thing. But I think it looks quite nice. I did have a plan to kind of turn this into like a mobile generator. To, to kind of scratch build a box and everything on the back. But you know what? I really can't be bothered. So uh, I don't think that will ever come. I think it'll just be... It's quite a scale World War II um, trailer. I have to say, I've looked at a lot of these real things online. And that is a pretty good dead ringer for, for a, a World War II Jeep trailer. Um, not so much a modern army trailer. Uh, they tend to be a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit dis different design, but you know, it's a, for, from Amazon, you know, all metal, it's a pretty good trail, I've got to say. I'm, I'm well impressed with it. But it's not very stable, it's not very wide, so it does bounce about, and you know, you have to drive carefully with them on. Um, so I'll probably get some scale bits and bobs in there, maybe even just some netting and stuff. Um, I might even try making a cover for it, you know. So there you go. Um, that's uh, what's on my bench. It's it's the run up to Christmas. It's the Christmas Christmas week. Is it the twentieth today? The twenty first, something like that. So yeah, time's getting on. This will be the last update, possibly of twenty twenty one. I'm not sure whether Terry's got one planned before the end of the year. Thank you for your support. And if you don't see Terry, I'm sure he'll. You know, I, I'm going to speak for him as well. Um, it's been a good year. We've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed these interactions, and um, we, we enjoy our little group of, you know, loyal supporters. You know, you guys comment on the videos, it's really great. I mean, we, we rarely go and see anybody else's videos. I do, you know, I say this a lot now, and I'm trying to, to remember to put, like when I'm working on the trucks, to put the computer on and watch other people's videos instead of just putting some, a film on or something. I'll, I'll try and sit and watch people's videos while I'm tinkering. And... Um, because it, you know, you guys make the effort with us, and we we really should be making the effort more with you guys. And um, yeah, well, we'll see you. We'll see you in twenty twenty two. I hope you all have a good time. Hope you have a good break. Don't eat too much. Don't drink too much. Don't drink and drive. You know, be grown up. Have some fun, and we'll meet you again in twenty twenty two. Okay, take it easy. Bye now.